All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. We've got some more TRX4 this week. We're going to swap out the steering servo and lighten up the rear of the body. So first job of the day, we're going to tackle the servo. When the truck was fresh from the box, the Traxxas servo did seem to just about do the job. But after looking around, I decided to do what all the cool kids were doing and fit one of those Power HD 20 kilogram servos. Rumour has it, the stock servo is around 100 ounce inches, which is roughly 7 kilogram centimetres. So this new servo is well over twice as torquey, so I reckon it should do the job. This is the LW20MG version of the servo, which is waterproof. There's also a non-waterproof version, the LF20MG. They're both exactly the same, other than the colour, and the waterproof servo has some extra gunk to seal it up. In the box we get the usual bits you'd expect with a servo, first being the servo of course, and we get a nice little bag of fixings for fitting to a model aeroplane and a couple of servo arms. Very chunky they are too. Right then, time to fit, but immediately we're going to hit a little snag. The wire on the new servo is quite a bit too short to reach the radio, so we're going to have to extend it. We could just use a servo extension, but I do prefer a soldered connection. There's less chance of things going wrong in the future. Before we start splicing, I think we're going to have a quick look at the bottom of the servo to see if we can solder a new lead directly to the PCB. It always makes for a nice clean install if you can just replace the whole lead. In this case though, they've gunked over where the lead comes into the servo. Now, we could peel it off, but that stuff should be making a nice seal, so I think we're going to leave it alone. OK, off camera I've spliced in an extra few inches of servo wire, so now if we pop the servo up at the front and run the wire round the radio box it reaches with some to spare. It's good to have a little bit extra, just an inch or so, as all too often the cable run ends up taking a little more wire than you expect. OK, we can remove the stock steering servo. First the steering linkage needs to be removed from the servo horn. It's just an M3 screw, but access is partially blocked by the drag link. Remove the screw and keep it somewhere safe for later. Back to the top again, and the servo is held in with four fairly funky looking screws. All four need to come out. The back one under the servo lead is a bit of a faff. A magnetic driver can be quite handy to get in there and get it out. So that's the servo loose, but it's still firmly attached at the other end. To get at the plug, we're going to have to take apart the nice Traxxas radio box. First, we'll take the lid off. It's held on with three button heads, which can be quite tight from factory, like a lot of the other Traxxas fittings, so make sure your Allen key is fully seated before going for it. With the screws out, the lid can just lift away. While it's off, be very careful not to damage the blue o-ring, and try and keep it nice and clean too. Next, we've got the cover where the wires leave the box. There's two small cap heads holding it on. Again, they're usually very tight from factory, so be careful. Lift it away, and just like the o-ring, we need to keep the inside nice and clean. Traxxas use a silicon grease around the wires to keep the water out, so we really don't want to get lots of grit in there. Now we've got access, we can move some of the wires out of the way and unplug the steering servo. It's a bit of a faff getting it up through the slot and around all the other wires, but with enough fiddling it does eventually come free. Just try not to dunk the connector in the silicon grease. We'll probably be reusing the stock servo arm too. It's fairly strong, so it's going to do the job. And I think both Traxxas and PowerHD use Futaba splines. We might change to a metal arm at some point, but I do quite like having the plastic. It adds just a little bit of give to the system to absorb some of the shock from those rapid unplanned descents. Now we can feed the new servo lead through the chassis to the new radio box. It might need a bit of persuasion to find its way through all the wires in there. Something to hook under it is quite handy too. So we can get the wiring snug and tidy, we need to pop the servo into its position, with the servo arm loosely fitted so we can check that it all clears. Both servos use the same thread for the screw, so we'll be swapping that over too when we do the final fitting. Now we can route the servo lead. It sits quite nicely along the side of the radio box and tucks under the corner with the other leads. Before we refit the cap, we need to apply some fresh silicon grease. You can get it from Traxxas, but it's fairly expensive. If you shop around a bit, you can get nice little pots like this that are going to last for ages. We just need to spread it out over the wires, so when we refit the lid, it will squeeze out the grease and fill all the gaps. When refitting, it would be really easy to pinch some of the wires, so we do need to be extra careful. Now we just need to tuck all the wiring back in the box so they're out of the way. 
pop the lid on and reinstall the screws. And just like the other bit, we need to be very careful not to pinch anything. So it's all wired up now. We just need to make sure the arm's in the right position. Now, I did do a nice little bit with the instruction manual, using the blink codes on the transmitter to centre the steering sub trim, reset the endpoints and all that good stuff, but it would seem I wasn't actually recording at the time. Never mind though, no, it's fairly clear in the manual as long as you take it step by step. So, as we've now got the servo nicely centred, we can double check the arms nice and straight and fit the screw. The servo comes with an anti-vibration washer, which would be a good idea to use. It can be tempting to use some thread lock, but removing the screw again might be a bit of a pain if you do. Now we can sit the servo on its mount and reinstall the four screws. We only want to install them loosely initially. We want a bit of a gap between the servo and the screw head. If you do the first one up tight, it's not impossible to block the other holes if the servo is a bit twisted. When they're all in loosely, do them up. They only need to be nicely nipped up. There's no point in really talking them down. All that's left now is to flip the chassis over and refit the steering linkage using the Traxxas screw. And, well, that's about it. We just need to give it a test. Well, it seems okay. It's still struggling a little bit to get from lock to lock, but it's getting a lot further than the stock servo was managing. I think with a stouter Beck, it's going to be even better. I'm not sure how much current the ESC's Beck can manage. I've heard it's about an amp, which would be a bit borderline. A Hobbywing 5 amp, or even a Castle 10 amp, would do the trick, I reckon. So we'll probably get to that in a future video. Right, so that was a servo. Now we're going to do a little bit of a mod to the body. On the back, we've got that really rather nice looking spare tyre mounted up. It looks great and does add some rear protection. But it's a bit heavy, adding lots of weight to the rear. And of course, it's fairly high up too. OK, to remove it, there is an element of luck involved. If you're lucky, all you need to do is use a cross wrench and undo the nut. Sometimes though, they're locked so tight the entire screw just spins around rather than the nut coming off. If that happens, you can squeeze the tyre to get to the cap heads that hold the mounting plate on. Once it's off, you can get to the head of the screw and drop a few drops of glue in to stop it spinning. But I was lucky though, and the nut came off without any issues. Now it's off, we could rearrange the gear on the back door, but I do quite like having a spare tyre. So to replace it, I've got an old touring car wheel. I think it was probably a Kyosho. I've cut up some round bits of closed cell foam to make up the new spare. The wheel just fits inside. To make it look a bit more like a spare, I'm going to use one of these super cheap tyre covers from AliExpress. I'll stick a link in the description if you're interested. Before we fit it though, we need to glue the bits together. The foam I used wasn't quite thick enough to do it in one piece. To glue it, I'm going to use Yoohoo Pour, as it stays a bit flexible and it's not going to melt the foam. We need to apply some to each face and spread it around, leave it a few minutes, then press them together. The shape isn't perfect, but it should be good enough. The cover has an elastic ring on the back, so we need to stretch it over the fake tyre. It's a bit of a faff, but after a bit of tweaking, I think it looks just fine. It is a bit blank though, so I think we're going to need a logo. Off to eBay I went, and I found a nice Nuka Cola decal that's about the right size. It was that, or a yellow smiley. I thought I'd let my geek show a bit though, and I do like the red better too. Now, I still haven't found my nice accurate scales, but I have dug out these kitchen ones, complete with a flat battery. The stock tyre is 110 grams, or sometimes 115, and the replacement with the wheel is 45 or 50 grams, under half the weight. I think that'll do. To fit it, we need to apply a bit of glue around the inside of the spare, fit the wheel to the holder on the back of the body, and slide the spare over the top, giving it a bit of a twist on the way. Now, I'm not sure how long it's going to last. It wouldn't surprise me if it doesn't survive very long at all, but it's a nice cheap experiment. Right, so that's going to be it for this week. I'm very sorry if it was a bit disjointed, but I'm currently suffering from quite the toothache, which of course only popped up on Thursday night, and I can't get an appointment at the dentist until next week. Why can't these things ever happen on a Monday? Anyway, I hope you liked the video. If you did, by all means leave a like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if you've got something to say. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.